right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeline or CRM. Joining you as usual from, yes, it's another sunny San Diego day. And today I'm delighted to be joined from just up the road, actually, in Pasadena, California, just outside Los Angeles. Robert and Kaylee Fokuyi, how are you doing? Yes, John, very good. Thank you. <laughs> and we could use some of that San Diego sunshine because we're socked in with fog. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And Robert and Kaylee are the co-founders of I61 Inc., a business consulting company. And here's the unusual part. They assist married entrepreneurs create better work-life balance by structuring the business to scale while giving precious time back to the owner to invest in their marriage. Uh, Robert has a marketing degree from San Jose State and 25 years successful experience in sales and marketing at companies such as Coca-Cola and Novartis. Uh, Kaylee earned her business degree at the University of Laverne. She's worked in the banking industry for many years in her family business as an operation. She worked uh, over 10 years and then, uh, you know, you've been working together and developed an in innovative consulting program, Power Couples by Design, which equips the married entrepreneur to build a thriving marriage and a prosperous business. And you authored the book Tandem, The Married Entrepreneur's Guide for greater work-life balance. So with us, what we're going to talk about today is how do you create work? How do you create balance, better balance in a marriage and business? Because Robert and, and Kaylee, I mean, mostly when you think about entrepreneurs, you I mean, you think about people working like 26 hours a day, eight days a week, just piling everything into it. And you never kind of stop to think about what is the impact on, on their relationships, on their marriage or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and so just, just give me a little bit of a genesis of how you came to this space and, and why you wanted to help here. Because like I said, it's, a, it's an unusual area that you're focused on. Yeah, I think it, for us, both of us kind of grew up in a childhood or household where our parents were working so hard, or at least our, our dads were working so hard. Our dad had a business. My dad was a pastor, but working so hard in their organization and building whatever that's in front of them that their family often took a back seat. And, you know, we're, we grow up in society back then and even now where our, our value, our identity, our worth is based on what we achieve and what we do. And it's not so much about our the strength of our relationships. But we spend most of our time, especially when you're married or even if you're single, your friends, whatever, your, your relationships are at the end of the day are the most important thing. And we have bought into this, this lie that we have to sacrifice our personal relationship as we're building this thing, whether it's our career. You know, I was in Fortune 500 and then also in business. We feel we have to sacrifice our personal life for the, for the benefit of the business. Um, that's the only way to do it. But that's not true. Right? Yeah, because one of the things I, I think is, is uh, you know, and this is kind of pervasive in Western society now, but certainly in America, I mean, we've always celebrated stress. We've celebrated like working so many hours. And it's almost like if you say to somebody, oh, I'm, I'm on top of everything. I'm not stressed. Everything's going fine. They kind of look at you and go, well, you must be you must be lazy because, uh, um, you know, we, we just celebrate this. And that's how we measure. Oh, somebody must be must be doing well because they're so stressed and they're working so hard. And it's almost like that's a rite of passage. If you want to be successful, you have to go mm -hmm. through all that stress. Yeah. It's like a badge of honor. And so I remember years, some years ago, you know, I just noticed whenever I'd ask people, you know, oh, how are you doing? And the natural response was, I'm busy. Yeah. And so I was listening to this. I'm thinking, oh, maybe I'm not doing enough because I'm not busy. <laughs> I didn't feel busy. I mean, I was productive. I mean, I was in sales and marketing and I was doing, you know, well. And I was thinking, well, maybe I'm not doing enough. You know, so I, I kind of felt I started responding myself busy and I basically talked myself into being busy. And I started mm -hmm. filling up my schedule with all kinds of stuff, not just work, but volunteer work and other things that people were asking me to do. And next thing you know, my schedule so filled up and then Kaylee's like wa over here waving, hey, how about me, <laughs> right? right? You're giving your best to everybody else, but not our relationship. So how did so how did you start to overcome that? And how did you how did you start to say, okay, like we need to do something differently here? And then how did you get to the point where you said, okay, I got to do something differently here. And now I can actually parlay it into other people. Yeah, so was when I was transitioning from a sales and my sales role in at, in pharmaceuticals, and I was developing the consulting business on the side, 
you know, yeah, I had to work, you know, during the day with my job, but then, so in the evenings was the only time I could use to develop the consulting business, but it got to a point where I was working till like 2 a.m. At, at this desk. And Kaylee was very, you know, gracious because she grew up in an entrepreneur household, understood what it took. And so she said, okay, I know it's just for a season until I transition. But it got to a point that I was so exhausted by the weekend, I, I wasn't even present. You know, mm -hmm. even though I wasn't working, but I was so tired and exhausted. And so one evening at 2 a.m., I'm sitting here at the desk and thinking, this isn't right. <laughs> this is not good, <laughs> right? I'm. It's not good for me. I can feel it on myself. And I was only, you know, mid 40s at that time. And then, and then it's not fair to Kaylee. And I said, even in this transition period, there's got to be a better way. At least by the time I hit the weekend, I'm still, you know, present for Kaylee, right? And so I just really started to identify what am I doing in the business and what's really productive versus what's busy work. Mm -hmm. right? Busy is not productive. And so that's when I started to realize. And so Kaylee and I got together and saying, okay, how do we redo this thing? And how do we make sure we, I prioritize my time and the things that are most productive for the business so I can grow and minimize as much as I can the busy work. And that's where it started. And then of course we started noticing that with our clients because then Kaylee joined me in the consulting business and most entrepreneurs are married and we started hearing the same kind of scenario where they're working so hard mm -hmm. that their family life was suffering. And that's kind of how it started. I think uh, we wear so many different hats when we have our own business. And a lot of times the go-to is work, put more work and more work in. But we're not measuring things and we're not finding out, is this working? Is this being productive? And uh, it just becomes all consuming and takes over our life. If we're not mm -hmm. careful. And one of the things you mentioned there, uh, where both of you is how things can take over your lives and how, you know, busy is a badge of honor. And one of the phrases I hear all the time nowadays is like, oh, I'm busier than I've ever been. This is the busiest I've ever been. And I always kind of question that to say, is it though, or is it the most distracted you've ever been? Because <laughs> you know, seriously, because I mean, if you did, I always say, if we did an old fashioned time and motion study, you know, somebody with a clipboard standing behind you, checking off what you're doing all day, how much of that time would be spent? Would you find you're spent checking on this thing or an alert came up about some news item or your sports team or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and, and what you're talking about here is, actually taking a look at all of the time and everything you're doing and making sure that it's productive. And then the time that you're saving there is you're investing it back into your relationship. Would that be right? Absolutely. In fact, that's kind of what I did was I just did the old fashioned audit my time. Where, where was I, you know, just like a, a journal basically is diarying where I was spending my time every moment when I was consulting when I, in the business. Right. And so then you start to look at, you know, how productive are these different activities? And then we came out with this kind of acronym of ADE. How can I automate, delegate, or eliminate some of this busy work? Mm -hmm. Right. So as a consultant, some of the things, where, you know, that's good use of our time is like doing things like this, or we have our own content, we have our own podcast, and then developing uh, course material curriculum or things for the benefit of our, our clients, right. you know, really kind of spending that kind of thought time into that and even thinking long term about the business and the growth. Um, and so even as a, with a marketing background, I mean, I out, we outsource the mm -hmm. marketing work, the, the editing of our podcast, the graphics and the website. I could potentially do some of that, but it will take me a lot longer <laughs> than paying somebody <laughs> to get it done in a, in a, in a minute. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah. And I think that's one of the things that people overlook today is uh, sometimes is the fact that you can do all of this. Like you can, you can, I mean, and, and now with AI tools, you can do a lot yourself as well, but you can outsource a lot, you know, with Upwork, with um, yeah. things like that, where you can find highly skilled people. So you don't have to take on everything yourself. Um, but tell me um, just uh, Kaylee, uh, before you made the transition in, in this business and that, like, what was it making you feel like when you were, you know, taking, you know, a backseat to uh, Robert building the business? Because I think oftentimes, you know, we kind of convince ourselves that we have to make these sacrifices for a while. And that while turns into a longer while and a longer while, etc. So how, uh, how, how was it for you? And what, what kind of uh, what what changed? 
Yeah, I, I guess I did look at it that way. I thought, oh, I could do this. It's not that big of a deal. I can do it for a season. But now looking back, I'm like, oh, my gosh, because I love call me crazy. But I love spending time with my husband and going doing and doing fun things. It was tough. And then the weekend would roll around. He would get in his chair after he took the dog out. And you know what that meant? He's going to fall asleep because <laughs> he was so exhausted and tired. Mm -hmm. And then I would feel bad. Um, asking him wanting to go do something because I knew he was so tired and exhausted. So, yeah. And so when and and, and so when you um, when you had a you know eventually decided to come into the business and stuff, did you worry that that was that it was just going to end up with both of you totally consumed in the business, or did you have a plan? Robert was concerned that it wasn't going to work out. He didn't want to work together at the beginning because he thought it was going to be really bad on our relationship. So that took a little bit of time for him to uh, want some help. Mm -hmm. But we did, you know, to kind of answer your question about the worry part. And I was good because I was already aware before I kind of went full time in the business. I want to make sure, you know, because the, th the thinking is, you know, once I go into the business full time, then I don't have the corporate job to lean on. So I should have more time. But a lot of us. We, f we will backfill that empty time. Mm -hmm. And so I was mindful about not wanting to do that. And so we started really, um, she basically held me accountable. And so we started kind of doing these weekly meetings. And so Monday afternoons at 3.30, we meet to discuss, you know, business issues, but also personal issues. And we just kind of try to keep ourselves centered to make sure we don't get off the rails. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, there's busy seasons in our business, just like any is. Sure. So it's not like we're always, you know, perfectly balanced or aligned. And there's p seasons where we're going to be busier, but we want to make sure that's the exception, not the rule. And so having those re regular check-ins was a way to kind of keep me and both of us really accountable. Because now that she's in the business, sometimes she gets consumed with business. <laughs> so we kind of help each other, kind of hold each other accountable in that way. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing is we always give each other an encouraging word. And I know uh, sometimes that carries me out through the week because, mm -hmm. you know, you'd be surprised how we get, get busy doing our own thing and we don't think to um, encourage each other and tell them what we appreciate about them. Yeah, no, that's an, I, I think that's an excellent point. And one of the things that, uh, again, we're kind of hard, hardwired as humans, unfortunately, is to find the negativity. We're very good at uh, spotting mistakes, uh, you know, and all of that kind of thing. We're very, very bad at catching people doing things, doing good things, right? Yeah. Um, we kind of just accept that and move on instead of like, you know, taking the time out to actually give somebody an encouraging word or give them a pat on the back or whatever it is. Um, and I think that's, a, and I, obviously I think if you're going to work with your significant other, uh, then that becomes even more critical because let's face it, we're, we're, we're pretty good at, uh, at our one-liners to our, <laughs> to our significant others uh, without yeah. thinking sometimes. And I'm I'm guilty of that because you know my dad was pretty I don't say critical it wasn't so much that he was critical it was just that he doesn't give encouraging words mm -hmm. and so the words that came out of his mouth was really some kind of correction right so to, as a as a as an adult or as a son you're just thinking you're always I think that's part of what uh, what creates you or molds you to be driven to succeed because you're looking for that approval and then you get caught consumed with that and so for me I had to be very conscious about giving Kaylee an encouraging word, because if I don't, this goes back to the work-life balance. It's not about just quantity of time. It's just quality of time. And just a few minutes encouraging her, right, is just absolute, that's worth hours just doing errands together. Yeah, <laughs> no, abs absolutely. When you, when you have worked with other entrepreneurial couples, um, what has been, what have some of the surprises, what has surprised them and they've gone through your process? Because I guess you probably find people who are at different stages, but you probably find people who are, when, when they meet you, things are a little rocky, right? Yeah. So you think what surprised us or what's surprising what to surprised them? surprised them? Uh, what surprised them, I think, is how easy and simple having better balance in your life and having a better running business and appreciating each other, but yet how mentally and emotionally difficult it is to do it. <laughs> so just talking about blocking time in our calendar to have those weekly meetings or first thing in the morning, we, we pray together and encourage each other. It doesn't take a lot of time, but for some reason, when we bring up these little things to do, it's like, we don't have time. Yep. 
<laughs> and I go, it's only a few minutes a day. I mean, it's not a lot of time, right? Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned the phone. We, I mean, I, I always say, I was, I was dare them. I said, give me your phone and let me look at how much time you spend every day on the phone and on what app. And mm -hmm. I can find you some time to spend quality time with your spouse. And so the thing that surprises them is, you know, once they get over that hump of actually doing it, the surprising thing for them is like, oh, how easy and simple this is. Yeah, <laughs> but there's just an emotional block. Yeah, yeah. And no, I like that. And the fact that they have the time available, like we all have the time available, we just have to be intentional about it. And I guess that's the, I guess that's what it comes down to at the end of the day is, is it, I mean, you have to make a decision that I, yes, I want a successful business, but I want a successful business and a successful relationship together, not one mm -hmm. or the other. Yeah, absolutely. You can have both, but again, it is intent being intentional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what are what are some of the ways that you advise people, um, you know, to start building out that? Because I, I was find now that you know people are so afraid to be disconnected for a moment. They're so afraid to be with their own thoughts for a moment. They're they're so even afraid to like just spend time with their significant other or their spouse or whatever because they just feel like they should be doing something else. So how do you get over that hump of always feeling like you should be doing something else as opposed to focusing on what you're, you're doing right now? Well, one thing that I do is I put my phone, we work from home. So I put my phone in the other room. So if someone calls me, I can hear it ringing, but I'm so much more productive than looking at my phone just to see if someone texts me, it didn't even ping. And I'm like, Oh, I keep checking it for some mm -hmm. odd reason. I don't know why, but, and I'm like, wow, just something simple like that. And, and we start with having them set their vision. And that's like what we did for each other. What's your vision for the future? And what's your best life look like, right? And a lot of times we're thinking 10, 20, 30 years ahead. But then we just bring it back and say, okay, now how can we do some of that even in the present? Mm -hmm. Right? Like even like people want to travel more. Well, how can you do to some weekenders? Right? How we bring is the vision, but bring it into the present. And wow. we may not be able to do all of that. We want 30 years from now, but we can do some of that. And then if you don't make changes now, what is going to change to be able to live your best life? Is it because your business is that uber successful? You sell it for a billion dollars or multi-million dollars. But even with that, is that going to help the relationship? Because right. we know the money doesn't do anything right because we're if you're so consumed with being busy and achieving then if even if after you sell the business for a lot of money you're going to backfill it with trying to do something else to achieve right? right so in order to create in order to achieve this vision your best life you got to be able to do some of that in the present and how do we do that now yeah. and that's the conversation we start with no, I, I, I love that because I think that's the, sometimes uh, debilitating is that you, you set a bold vision for yourself and and uh, and then you sort of get a little bit paralyzed because it seems so far away. But what you're saying there is like, you know, start to as you start to take the steps towards your destination, start to live a little bit of that future life now. So everything isn't so, you know, far away from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're building a habit of no feeling you know living your good life now and enjoying the process because you don't want to achieve this great business that you eventually sell but your relationships struggle and mm -hmm. suffer and maybe split right which happened in kaylee's family and so you got to enjoy the and plus you're going to miss out on the best years of your life with your kids mm -hmm. Your, even your spouse, right? When you're younger is when you can do a lot more. You're more active, right? Yeah. You have a little more energy. And why wait and waste all that time achieving when you can be doing, it's just still working towards your business goals, but also be able to enjoy the journey. And it's something you can do together, a dream. Mm -hmm. And it's fun. And it could be just a little piece of it, but it's, it's encouraging and it keeps you going. It gives you something to look forward to. So what would your, finally, what would your advice be to any couples out there who maybe are considering, you know, starting a business or maybe one of them has a business and the other, the other uh, significant other is considering joining it? And what, what advice would you give to them? I'd say usually when you're married, we marry someone opposite of us, opposite of us. And to utilize that, you know, Robert's very detailed. I'm more the creative. It used to drive me crazy. He's so detailed. But now it's handy. I'm like, right. if I need something that's really detailed, I have him look at it as opposed to allowing it to rub me the wrong way. Yeah, yeah so work, it's working your strengths is, is big. 
because a lot of times we try to plug our spouse, you know, when you're a business owner, you try to plug your spouse into something that needs to be done, but you don't want to do it or you don't want to pay for help. <laughs> so you plug your spouse in and eventually it's usually the wrong position for them. So it's really positioned to, to take advantage of gifts and skills and also to create some boundaries. If you're going to be working with each other, but even now start to think about what are the boundaries to create, to protect our personal life? Mm-hmm. Like what are the, what are the bare minimum things we can do every day, every week that's going to continue to strengthen our relationship as we grow our business. Right? So, the first thing in the morning, what we do first thing in the morning with our quiet time, you know, our weekly meetings and then a date night and date night doesn't have to be elaborate. doesn't have to be, you know, three hours, four hours. I mean, you know, I remember talking to one, we talked to one couple and they said, cause they have young kids and they couldn't, they didn't have sitters, you know, they didn't have family around. So what they did was creative thing they did was for date night was they just order takeout. They asked the kids, give us an hour. They went into the car backed out of the driveway, <laughs> backed out of the garage into the driveway and ate in the car, turned on some music <laughs> and talked and connected, right? So sometimes you got to be creative with this. Yeah. And so just find those creative ways to spend time together and protect that space. And again, just what I just mentioned there isn't a lot of time. So mm-hmm. you can be busy. You can have a busy season in your business, but you can still do those things. And so boundaries and protection of the time to make sure you're able to build the business, but also also grow your relationship. And there's all kinds of free stuff you can do this summer yeah. that doesn't cost anything. They can spend time with their spouse. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, those are those are great, great pieces of in, uh, uh, great piece of advice, great insights for people. So things to think about if you're going to go into business with your spouse. Uh, Listen, this has been fantastic. Such great insights. Like all of Robert and Kaylee's information will be below this video. But before you go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your business. Yeah, so we kind of have a unique blend of business consulting and a little bit of marriage coaching. <laughs> so, so we help the business scale and grow so you can have greater freedom in, in your life to enjoy the things that you really want to do and prioritize so you don't have to wait for retirement to do those things. And so, yeah, we work one-on-one with couples or, or two-on-two and then sometimes in groups. But, uh, yeah, we enjoy what we do and we enjoy the, the fruit of seeing the business grow while their marriage thrives. Fantastic. Well, listen, thanks again, Robert. Thanks, uh, and Kaylee. And thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank right, you, John. John. Thanks. <laughs>